Hi, Dan. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Look at what Dan's got here. These are Ukrainian solutions. She's a clothing tailor, but she will make anything that you ask of her. Fair price, good turnaround time. So now if you want a blackout drive. Blackout drive, it totally covers the uh, running lights. Yes. Uh, I have behind it, I bought at uh, Epicenter some of this uh, press-on foam. Yeah. Uh, so it covers it from all directions. Uh, if we now go into uh, driving light mode, uh, they're totally screened, so we're totally dark. And if we then get a little further from, you know, the hot area and we want to actually see where we're going, uh, we can turn the lights back on. We have a real small light footprint uh, from the front of the truck, but it uh, it lights up. The, it gets you out. The path. Yeah. Good to go. I like that. I might, I might look into something like that for the patrol. I got those headlights that are so bright and you're like, who's that fucking asshole every time? Right. Right. But I, I have and to, I have to put scotch. I have to put tape over them all the time. It, we got tired of the tape because the tape, you either have it or you don't. Yeah, yeah. And these this ones, is we can always there off. if we're uh, making the the big long drive to Kiev. Yeah. Uh, we just rip them off, do our highway driving, and then stick them back on. It's just Velcro and two-sided tape. That's that's holding them on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Step into my office. And, and this is my legacy in case something happens to me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting all the grades on film. Gotcha. There we go. Hello, Dan. Brandon. You all right, brother? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Living the dream. You were talking as an American, how you're sick and tired of American politicians playing Ukraine as a left versus right issue. That's absolutely correct. Yes. Why don't you tell me about that? Because I, I, I'm not American and, well, we feel the same. Well, you know, one thing that we do have access to over here, too, is uh, internet. Yep. Uh, most of the places we are, thank you Starlink, uh, we can kind of, uh, you know, scroll YouTube and the, 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 the different sources. And so you get a pretty good perspective of kind of what's going on, what the, what the feelings and the thoughts are. And naturally, because of what I view, mm -hmm. you know, my suggested uh, viewing is... American, American news. Yeah, it's yeah. American news. Uh, so I see a lot of it from the right. I see some of it from the left. Um, and of course, you know, everywhere you go, you get fed the CNN and uh, this sort of thing. So I think we've got a pretty good feeling for, you know, the way that the American people by and large feel. And, uh, and certainly, if you follow uh, the run-up to this next election and you see the, this, this field of candidates that are kind of duking it out right now. Yep. Um, it's all very transparent and you, you see everything that's going on. And, uh, and yeah, there are just some very interesting things there. There's, it's very clear that uh, the powers that sort of put the machine together and make it run, they have an agenda. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of the people subscribe to that agenda whether it's the, the the political candidates or the you know the some of the popular talking heads uh on, you know that have uh strong youtube channels um and they kind of follow the narrative uh, there's there's something interesting that uh happened uh with one of the youtube uh personalities recently uh a woman i don't know if you ever watched her kelly fontanelli no uh she's she's really good She's really good, and she's uh, she always keeps her, her her topics to you know a real short, concise little thing, and she takes on one topic at a time. And she's pretty funny too. She's she, she's pretty clever woman, mm -hmm. and uh, she exposed something that I think everyone kind of knew happens, uh, but she laid it out kind of in detail, and that was that once she got to have a larger following. Uh, she started getting propositions from uh, some of the movers and shakers on the right, uh, some of the you know people from the Republican Party. Yes, uh, that were like telling her, "Hey, if you take on this subject and you give this viewpoint, you know, we'll pay you for this." They were trying to sway her, trying to sway her, and and she even said, that, you know, to her credit, she's a very very open and honest woman, and she said that. 
in one instance she did that and she felt so terrible about it that she vowed never to do it again and now she's kind of exposed it and she's a decent woman so she didn't name names yeah and, yeah and spill that but uh but yeah she said and and when you look at it with that perspective <clears throat> you start to see some of the other channels where i'd wondered i would like you know normally they give a really really uh intelligent uh, insightful view about things and they lay out all of these facts right they lay out all mm. of these facts and they put them there everything they say is backed up by their facts confirmation biases y yes and then suddenly you hear them talk about another thing and they just kind of make a statement it's just kind of like that talking point yes and then they move on you know or they'll expand about it, but they ne they don't give the proofs behind it and so I'm starting now to watch a little bit critically and see like, okay, what are these subjects that you're talking about where you're not giving proofs behind it? And uh, I could give you some examples of it, but I, I'll tell you that one of the big ones is the support for the war in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, right. This is, uh, when you made that real uh, and I shared that, um, it's not just a right thing, it's a right-left thing. Like, it's um, everything... I've, I I kind of felt lost in the world. Um, oh, probably since about 30 years old. Uh, this is just me, personally. That, like, um, I used to be able to tell you every member of government, you know what I mean? I voted sure. in several elections. Sure. And I'm just as guilty now. I'm, 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 I'm an, what you call an expat. That's what, that's what white people call themselves as immigrants. Yes. Um, for so many years. But I feel so disenchanted. I don't vote anymore. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't participate. I just try to live my own life. But I, I, Ukraine is a political issue. Uh, well, it's a human fucking issue. Uh, to yeah. me, it should transcend all parties. Yes. What we're doing should transcend all parties. Yes. And it's, you, it's 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 just common decency. I mean, when we when we were attacked on 9/11, mm -hmm. there was a period after 9/11 where you, you you didn't know who it was on television. You couldn't tell if they had a D in front of their name. If they were or red or blue, in front of their it didn't name. matter. Right. It just everyone was speaking in support of our effort to you know recover and to seek justice and we were with you i grew and up in canada we were with you 100 percent. absolutely and everyone was lockstep again. and that's what this should be too I, I, it should be it's i understand that it's kind of become a bit mundane you know you're hearing these news stories over and over and over and over and i i understand i've been there too you yeah know, we, we had real issues going on in the world that you just kind of become a little bit deaf to because it's a lot of the same old stuff being repeated and repeated again. And it's, I mean, thankfully there are people like you, I'm trying to do it too, but that are, you know, trying to keep it fresh and keep it alive and let, let people know what's really happening here and what, you know, what the truth is, what the real situation is here and not what, you know, these big, uh, I don't even know what to call them. I mean, they, they use the term oligarchs here for the, 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 you know, the, the big uh, chess players yes. in, in this region. Well, we have the same thing in the political arena in the United States. What do you call them? I don't know. But, but those people are creating false narratives about what this war is about, why it started, why it's continuing, um, who the people are who are involved, yeah. the reasons for it. All of it is, is, is fiction. And, and you really only have to be here like a week. I mean, one week, you, you're you here and you will be like, oh my gosh, everything melted, everything that was in front of my face, blocking my vision, just completely melted away, and I, and I see the truth. Yeah. This is, this is it. And I, I just, I, I just want to tell, I just want to tell my story as what I see and what I believe to be true, but just tell what I see. Uh... I don't know. We're not the ones calling the shots, but just like perspective. I, I, you're from Michigan, right? Yes. Born and raised in Michigan. Born and raised and moved around quite a bit, but yeah, most of my life in Michigan. You joined the army? Air Force. Air yes. Force? Yes, Air Force, yes. And how many years you spent in Germany? Uh, well, two years in the military. Yeah. And then I met a woman who was a very good wife to me for a long time. Uh, is not any longer, but uh, I moved back to Germany and 
nearly two years as a civilian there while she finished. And you speak school. German? I do speak German. Talk. I just, uh, yeah. I think that's an important thing to acknowledge. My Swedish has degraded uh, so bad since I've been here. I, I don't speak Swedish to the Swedes anymore. I'm embarrassed about it, mm. but it, it it requires a person, uh, especially as an Anglo. I don't like to shit. I, we always like to shit on ourselves. I, you es, like to shit on other foreigners. Too. Sehr schnell zurück. No, but uh, man, man muss ein bisschen in diese Sprache sprechen und dann kommt es wieder zurück ganz schnell. Uh, ich bin jetzt im Moment uh, ein bisschen Povilno. Uh, uh, Povilno is slow in Ukrainian, but uh, uh, I see now I forget it's slow in German. But anyway, it, it comes it's, back quickly. You, you tried to learn. You tried to. You tried. It, it, it requires an understanding of the culture. Langsam. Uh, yeah, langsam. Slow. Uh, same in Swedish. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one reason I respect you here, because out of all of the foreigners I know, your Ukrainian's not good, but you speak the highest level of all of us. Uh, around around all the people I know, the foreigners. So you really try to, you really try to, you, you're not here, you're here for a long time, not a good time. That's, that's, that's the key. I've had so many people tell me like, oh my gosh, it's so great that you're learning their language. You're really respected. Full disclosure, I'm learning their language because it drives me freaking crazy to be part of a conversation all day long, every day, and not know what the hell's going on. Mm. It's a really, really selfish thing. But, like, yeah, I'm not if they appreciate level. it. I won't tell them that. See. I know when they say like Mojna or Potridna, like and and when I know the context of what's going on, I can pick up. Okay, I know I know at least this is what's happening. You've moved beyond that. Um, how many years were you a Michigan State Trooper? Uh, what was it, eleven? More than eleven. Okay, so before you come to Ukraine, you, you were retired. Like uh, I. I what was the circumstances when you came here? How, how it all laid out that you could come here as long as you did? Well, I, uh, after my state police career, uh, I worked in some other places. I worked uh, at a college, which was a, uh, you know, it was a, a department of safety at a, at a community college in Detroit. And uh, mm -hmm. that was a really, really, really rewarding role for a, a lot of reasons. But uh, then I went into private sector and uh, I was working as public safety and was trained as an EMT uh, working for uh, a company half owned by General Motors working in uh, General Motors headquarters in downtown Detroit. Yeah, right. And I asked for a leave of absence to come here and I I asked for 90 days and yeah. I was given a verbal okay. Okay, yeah, wish you wouldn't go, but <coughs> I understand. Just, uh, just put it in writing for me. I need something in writing. Yes. Okay. So I had to wait like almost two weeks before I had my my, my uh, travel plans yeah. finalized. Uh, so then I submitted it with like maybe 10 days to go and uh, didn't hear anything back, didn't hear anything back, didn't hear anything back. Okay. I worked right up till the literally the day that I was leaving to come here and I worked the midnight shift. So sure, I yeah. went in at 10 p.m. Uh, to start a shift, get off at 6 a.m. and I would fly out that morning. And... A supervisor gave me a manila envelope and said you're not going to like this and i opened it up and it's a letter saying i'm sorry we have to deny your request so i'm sorry it's too late i already had you know the, these really wonderful ukrainian people in detroit had already bought a ticket for me and had all these plans and everything so uh i'm going so i left and uh and in my mind thank you for your service I, yeah well in my mind i had already received received verbal confirmation that yes. i was approved uh, so I would go and then it was like maybe 29 days after I had not shown up for the work shift I was supposed to show up for. Uh, I got an email from the company and it said, would you please fill out this survey for why you voluntarily separated from us? And yeah, so my response was uh, the same answer for every question. I did not voluntarily separate. I was uh, promised a... Uh, leave of absence and I as far as I'm concerned I'm on a leave of absence and I'm waiting for your response and I didn't get anything back so I figured well they fired me so what the heck might as well stay who gives a shit yeah at this point eh? who gives a shit the, it's priorities no but it's priorities people right? people they, write they, me all the time like how do I come to Ukraine can I come work for two three months they all want to without being insulting to them they all want to know that it's going to be okay yeah yeah and it's it's not really 
you kind of got to throw caution to the wind here. It's like, do you want to come or not? It's, uh, you know, I, sometimes I get a little bit biblical, so forgive me. But No, uh, I love it. It's, but there's, uh, you know, there's a, a theme about giving without counting the costs, right? And if you're going to come here, you're a giver, right? You, you, you're someone who wants to give something. And uh, if you try to count the costs before you come here, you might never get here. And I don't mean to criticize anyone or mm -hmm. dissuade anyone, or this, but I'm just saying that if you really want to be successful here, that's it's an approach that worked for me, and I would recommend it to anyone. Just get in your mind, I'm going to give, and I'm not going to count the costs. And, uh, you know, we live in a, in a, in a pretty good world. It's, it's, it's one of the great things about being here is um, when you see the struggle uh, that the people of this nation are going to have just recovering from all of this, right? They're not. So first priority is end this terrible war, this, this mass murder and genocide that's, 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 you know, being perpetrated against them. So we end this, end it. And then after we end it, there's going to be a lot, a lot of work to do here. A lot of work that still has to be done here. And they're going to need a lot of help and a lot of assistance. And, and there are patient people. They're a real, they're like a real hearty, durable, patient people. So they're going to be fine. They're going to be okay, but they're going to need a lot of help. But dude, we, we could go back. You could go back to Canada. I could go back to America right now. And in two weeks, be completely on my feet, you know, with a good job, good paying job, mm. uh, you know, eating good food, this or that, you know, don't worry, get somebody coming over, cutting the grass and, 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 and shoveling the snow out of the driveway. And, uh, and it's no problem. It's easy. Here it's not like that. So it, for me, it puts me in a whole new perspective here where I look and I go, holy cow, um, whatever I face when I go back to the States, whatever shoes have dropped, whatever, you know, cracks have appeared in the dike, Yo. it's going to be so damn easy compared to what life is here oh mate i'm a hustler so, my whole family's lebanese i'll work i'll work six and a half days a week for two years i'll have everything i need in life yeah, 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 that's yeah. what you do yeah we, right. we're, we're cash people we're not we're not maced up on yeah, credit yeah I'll but, just, but it's gonna be i'll live in a single room and you know but it's gonna be cake i'll be on top to i will be on top you will be on top well, you will be on top yes right it's right so that's i mean uh, babbling on but that's the bottom line is yeah i'm not counting the costs with what's going on here because I know that life is going to be much easier for me afterward compared to what life is here. So, uh, so I've got no worries. No doubts in the world. I know. And I, I cause you're a doer. Uh, I'm, and, and, and all the things you've had in life is cause you, cause you're you, you can go do this. I can go do this. So many people could do this. Um, and some do, some do. That, a lot do. A lot, a lot do. do. There are there. Yes, there's there is a lot. World of, worldwide, oh. uh, like I I know people who are watching this. Do you know how many people in my YouTube community are doing their own little part in their effort in their country for Ukraine? Yeah. Whether it's the humanitarian yeah. side, more of them are moving to the military side because they know this is the fucking solution. Yeah. Sadly enough, and they never would have thought that. Yeah. But there's so many people doing who can do something. Yeah. But we're still a minority worldwide. You know, that's a fact. I know. I know. And it's. It's, but it's cool club. It's, it's, it's a fucking amazing. cool club to be in. It's really amazing in its in its scape. There are so many people doing so many good things. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's what I'm from a real big land. You're from a bigger land, but I consider Sweden to be a smaller land. Yeah. I and mean, it's not small, small. It's big by European standards. But what they're doing, what the people of Sweden are doing, it's it's really really incredible. I'm really really impressed by it. And and the thing that boy you know it in a way it makes sense but it's also so telling the the neighbors of ukraine you know latvia lithuania estonia poland uh the all everything that they're doing even you know like finland and, and mm -hmm. there we're getting help from france now you know england nice. has been great has been wonderful uh germany's finally coming around finally mm -hmm. but uh said a bit long but not too late but 
the thing that's great is that not only not only do you see them coming to aid Ukraine and and I've spoken to people from these nations and I'll tell you they say yeah they do it because they're good and caring people but they also are very acutely aware that Ukraine is fighting for them that yes. they say you know what I there was a Polish guy who was in one of the units that I was serving with Yo. Uh, and he came to spend a night with me one night he needed a place to, to rack and uh, so we got into a little conversation and he asked me why I was here and I gave him a little spiel and then I asked him why he was here and his answer was real slow he said because we were next no shit he said I could fight them in Ukraine or I would have to fight them in Poland and uh and that's the the point i'm making is that they are acutely aware that ukraine is the one fighting the fight the necessary fight and so they're happy to support them because they know that ukraine is saving them from having to do it and and it also gives you an insight into their mentality if you know we we've got this faction in the united states who thinks that Ukraine is, you know, led by Nazis and they're a bunch of racists and they're this, these terrible people and it's so corrupt and they're, you know, they're instigators and they're, all of these, this crap, all of this garbage that is being spewed by these people. And if, if they could just like wake up, like literally get out of their parents' basements yeah. and look around, just look at the neighbors around Ukraine. Just look at the neighbors around Ukraine. And with the exception of Belarus, which is really just a Russian puppet, and and it's only Lukashenko in Belarus, the Belarusian people are on the side of Ukraine. We've got Belarusians, thousands of them fighting for us. Exactly. Here. Exactly. People, exactly. And that's not reported in the West. But uh, it's not reported in the West. And yet, it, like I say, if you look at all of the neighbors around Ukraine, they're all supporting Ukraine. They're all supporting Ukraine. Do you hear any of them criticizing Ukraine and saying that Ukraine is too corrupt and too many Nazis and, uh, you know, too racist and too... It's this bullshit narrative. It's exactly. It's what it is. And that's what I'm talking about. It's the, it's the BS narrative that is being pushed forth and it's being regurgitated by some of these, like, big-time YouTube influencers yeah. uh, who are doing it because they're getting paid to do it Yes, and because they want to maintain their status in you know in that demographic, they want their paycheck. And it yes, the dem the paycheck and popularity. Because the more popularity, the bigger the paycheck. So okay, this is popular in in our demographic right now. So I'm going to spew this, and then you've got. I just want to throw a. I just want to throw a uh, a quick little endorsement out. Not not an endorsement. Just a. Yeah. Just a hey, check it out. Um, we have a candidate uh, in the field in the United States right now by the name of Nikki Haley. Mm. And I just ask anyone, anyone who's watching your channel is... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we'll go for a walk, okay? Have fun. Yes, a minute, plus minus. The... Uh, those are my Ukrainian teammates. Great, really great people. Drone and Limon. Drone and Limon. Uh, Let's talk about them if you don't mind. Let's talk about you've worked with Nika, and if you're willing to, you've worked with Nico. Um, if you're willing to share any anything about, I, yeah. Um, let me just touch on real your quickly. on your own turn yeah. on your own time. So Nick, Nikki Haley, everybody check her out, please. Yeah. Uh, I don't know enough about her to endorse her, but. Uh, she's a strong conservative who has a very good outlook and a very good perception and she's willing to speak the hard truth about the needs of Ukraine and it bucks what the machine on the right is spewing yes uh, so she's getting kind of ridiculed uh, on some of those you know by some of those big influencers but 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 check her out check her out um okay so uh so let me start with the easy things about my teammates um uh, because you've I, been on how many teams since you've been here because uh, teams switch out when people get sick or wounded or or the worst happens i would have to go through and count you know i've done how many rotations I've you've been on? done uh, 
more than 15 rotations, I think, and only a couple of them were with the same same people, same teams. Now, Drone has been my longtime partner. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I've done work on mostly Western teams. I've done work on you know equal split Western Ukrainian teams. I've done. I went probably eight or nine months never working with a Westerner, just only with Ukrainians. Yes. And uh, a lot of good and, and a lot of really interesting people. Um, we, we've got a great battalion that we work with, and it's, it, it's hard to get a bad person to work with. Yes. But, uh, They're around. Let's not lie. But They're the, there, like the, everywhere. Well, I know. Like but everywhere. It's, but it's, a, fortunately, I've been blessed with really, really good people that I've worked with. And uh, Drone is a, I don't know if anybody saw him when he came into the window right now, but uh, Drone is a uh, really, really good guy. Um, in case people don't know, uh, when the war kicked off, you know, there was a, um, like a mandatory conscription, like all uh, military age males, so what was it, 18 to 60. 60, uh, were required to kind of check in and register and be here and be available. But some people had a pass, you know, people with medical conditions had a pass and students had a pass. If you were a university student, you had a pass, you were excused. And, uh, and that was Drone. Drone is a aeronautical engineer <clears throat> and was in a very elite program at an elite school in Kiev. And he, uh, I mean, the Ukrainians knew that this war was coming for a while of course and so prior to the uh actual invasion uh he had made application to hospitalers and he underwent training with hospitalers uh but he wasn't activated because there was not a uh, a big mission for them yet but uh right after the invasion <coughs> he started to go out and uh work on teams and he was getting sent like on new unexperienced teams uh inexperienced and uh so they were going to like quieter uh less busy locations and like zaporizhia last summer yeah those kind of rotations exactly yeah. and and he uh uh was kind of getting tired of it and so he thought that uh like my team was getting some good assignments and good mm -hmm. interviews and uh we had a mutual friend and they recommended that uh he come onto the team so the funny thing was, uh, the first couple times I tried to take him on the team, we were going to Bakhmut. And uh, back when Bakhmut was... Bakhmut? It was, yeah. And uh, so, okay. And he would show up to go, and then one of the commanders would see him and be like, oh, no, 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 you can't go, you're not ready yet. So he got, uh, uh, he got kind of kicked off two of the rotations, and he was really like on his last straw. He was already talking with the army and he was just going to enlist and uh give up his uh his spot with the university and yeah because he had that real burning desire to serve and when i asked him why he gave me a, an answer that you know i'll never forget he said uh someday i'm gonna have grandchildren and when they asked me dad what did you do during the war what am i gonna tell him and uh I thought, yeah, you know what? That was when I was kind of like, yeah, you're on my team. Yeah, and, uh, and and what a great um, mutual decision that was for us to to, what to did you do during the war. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and then the the sort of epilogue to that is uh, he told me a couple of months ago. He said, uh, "Hey, man, I don't know how to break this news to you, uh, but." Um, it's really getting crunch time for me and my aeronautics program and uh, probably in August uh, I'm gonna have to stop going on rotations go back to school so yeah and uh, and I said look I understand man you've been going because we've been going constantly we've been going constantly the the schedulers in the battalion have been telling us like no 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 you need a break you need a break and we're like uh, f breaks you know we'll get breaks in the field uh, on a quiet rotation work yeah so um so we've been going pretty nonstop. so i told him look man you you've been great you've done everything you, you freaking can plus and uh the battalion gave him a medal i mean they gave him a medal you got one of them too yeah they i i probably got it more for what he and and garda did but uh yeah but um, 
I mean, they appreciate him. He's a, he's he, he's a he's a freaking performer and an asset. Yes. <clears throat> and um, and so I said, okay. So I brought on another guy onto the team to kind of like break him in, and he's going to be Drone's replacement. And then uh, he and Drone didn't get along very well. And I had to kind of make a decision. Who was I going to send home? And mm -hmm. who was I going to keep on rotation? And there was no decision to be made. It was it was Drone. Of course. And part of it was that I told Drone, I said, you know, I was bringing him on to groom him to replace you. And he said, oh, yeah, about that. Um, it's official now. Uh, I got kicked out of my uh, program mm -hmm. at the university. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, we we all make sacrifices right and and the ukrainians you know they make huge sacrifices too and they sacrifice and, their lives and this guy i mean he he could have maintained his position in the university in that program if he would have just done it like the normal the normal hospitaler way if he had gone out for two weeks and then come back for two or four weeks and then go out for two weeks and then come back for two or four weeks <coughs> but the counteroffensive was starting, and he wasn't going to miss it. No. So it was just go, 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 and it cost him his spot at the university. He's a good boy. Yeah. He's, uh, I mean, I feel for him because that's a great thing he missed out on, but I've already talked with you about this. You know that we kind of have a plan. Yeah. To, uh, we're all, if I'm in Kiev, I'll show up too. We'll all go to the university. If I can have the battalions there, we can, we can let the administration know what we think. Yeah. Yeah. The tactfully, fact, the fact that they, the fact that they even have a safe school that doesn't have a Russian flag over it to the, today is it's because of is this. For people like that, yeah, is for people like that doing exactly what drone is is doing. Exactly. What about uh, yeah. what about another one of our young heroes that uh, I can't let you out of here without talking about Nika, because uh, Nika Nika is adored and loved uh, by many of my followers. Um. Do they know that I was the one who introduced you to Nika? Uh, so I'll, I'll tell it real quick, because uh, I can tell it quicker if I try. Um, Dan needed a generator, a uh, generator, tires, whatever the hell you needed. And you tires guys were in, and Starlink and generator. You yeah. guys were in Blahodotne, but no offense, you guys were in the shittest luck ever. Like nothing was going right for you yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, so over the run of a week, we pretty much managed to solve everything. Uh, from your Starlink to the generator to the tires, and we I did, and you were showing some love with repairing the Starlink too. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was that pretty was, cool. That was good because I didn't know if we could actually repair a Starlink. Right, right. And I went to Nipro, and they, the guys who could do it, didn't want to get out of their basement because of a missile attack. And I said, "We need this in fucking Solodar." You know what I mean? Like, you're all, please help. And I kind of like guilted them. I don't want to say that because they've actually done a lot of work for the army, uh, <coughs> but afterwards. I needed Nika uh, yeah. because we had a TAC med course lined up with the civil administration, which was a waste of time, if I'm honest. But those are the guys who get uh, the shakers and movers in Donbass. So the people who work for them could potentially get TAC med courses in the future if we did this right. Yeah. So this, it was a beautiful thing. You guys got helped, but I got Nika and, and you guys got help for a week. I got Nika for two months Yeah. and then handed her back to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here you go. I've had enough of her. Yeah. Nika, Nika is one of the my favorite people walking the face of the earth. Nika's incredible. And my Nika uh, face. And it's <laughs> No, Nika is um Nika sometimes you've got to not pay attention to like what her body language is saying and what she because she doesn't always convey what her thoughts and her feelings are in the, you know, they don't match. No. Right. And there's a discongruence. Once, once you learn that and you kind of get, get through that and kind of figure her out, she, my gosh, man, is it, if you were really, really hurting, if you were really hurting and you needed help from someone, who else would you turn to other than Nika? Nika. Is it? I mean, she's she's incredible, and she, I refer to her all the time as Doogie Howser. Do, uh, Doogie Howser, MD. She, if you're not American, would, look him up. She would, yeah, she would, she would kill me if she knew that I was talking anything about her age. Oh yeah, my age and gender do not define me. Yes, but 
this girl, the amount of information she stores and her decision-making processes are so beyond her years that I literally think of her as Doogie Howser. She's in a, uh, in a good way, really in a good way, in the best way possible. She's she has all the potential in the world, uh, and I have I'm I'm at an age and a point in my life I have no problem admitting that someone has more innate intelligence than me. Yes, right. And she's just got to survive this war, and uh, her potential is incalculable. She's gonna do really really great things somewhere somehow. She's going to do really, really great things. N not that she hasn't already. Mm. She's she's done amazing things, but she's going to live a life of great things somewhere for someone who's not her. Mm. And uh, yeah, she's 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 an amazing person. She really is. Our, our Nika, our um, Nika, absolutely. And you know, it's a pleasure for me. I know her sister now. Uh, I know her brother because he's in Sweden um, and I know his wife and, and their family and, and I was even able to see her when she, she was in loves, Sweden she loves her sister-in-law oh yeah she they're they're like this Gabriella her and her is like um, yeah. they it's and which they're in Sweden and which brings me to Sweden and uh, you know it's one of my greatest regrets of the war um, I, I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I was very I was very sick, but I was mobile. I was in Kiev for a few weeks when you were there, and and Nico was there, and um, you know I, I do have a I do have a lot of Swedish people who watch this, and I I, I people who know him. Um, you worked with Nico for over two months, didn't you? Almost it worked. I, I I lived, worked, lived, played. Nico, there wasn't more than an hour in any given day that I wasn't elbow to elbow with Nico. We worked together, we played together. We, Nico, when I mean, we of course refer to everyone we're close with here as our brother, and but Nico was literally my brother, um, and and always will be. Yeah. He, he, no. Nico. Um, Nico almost got me so many damn jobs. Everywhere we would go, we would go and meet a military commander somewhere. Yep. Every single time, I, every single time, that military military commander would be like, uh, "Do you do you want to sign a contract with us? We could get oh, and you too." And so I was his wingman. And, you know, here we he are. He was built like a Greek god, good-looking, tall Swedish, like, hands on him the size of shovels. If, if you were going to make a, like, a Ukrainian army G.I. Joe, right, this would be your model, Nico. right? You would, Nico. And, uh, and, yeah, but, and it was also, but his character, too, mm -hmm. is he, you know, he, and it wasn't something that he projected. It was something that just, he emitted, that was just he was good. He was, you know, when I say good, I mean like real decent, upright, you know, stand up guy. Um, so selfless, so dedicated, so, um, unselfish. Right. And, and, uh, and you just knew, I mean, literally within a minute talking to him, you were like, damn, I'm, I'm glad this guy's on my team. This guy's yeah. like, he's my first round draft pick in every situation. And it's, you know, we always like to talk, you know, favorably about people who have passed. Yeah. But none of this is that. None of this is that. This is all 100% genuine. This was Nico. And if he was sitting in the back seat right now, um, I would be saying the same thing. Uh, Nico was the, 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 the best human being and the, and the, the closest brother that I could ever ask for here. And I, I, I love Drone to death. He's my, uh, you know, I, I, Drone and I will be lifelong friends. We'll be this close forever. Um, but with Nico, it was something a little bit different even. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's my biggest regret. Um, you know, like I was, I was sick, but like you guys invited me out to dinner twice, I remember. And 
I kind of had this shitty attitude where it's like I just wanted to be alone. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I'd, I'd leave the house like once a day because I'm lucky in Kiev. Like I got a place to stay for free and it's like nobody can bother me. You know what I mean? And, and I, I just get in that place. But um, I, I ended up, however it played out, we went back to Donbass, me and Nika, and we were together for a week. And then in Pavlograd, I dropped her off with you guys. There was you, Paulina, there was Nico, and everyone. And I had to go back. Uh, we got a car donated to us from another Swedish organization, the Land Cruiser. And he's like, oh, can't say no to that. I yeah. had to go meet them in Lviv. And, uh, you know, next thing I know, Nika calls me. Nika, Nika lost her phone. But Nika has my number and she says, can you call Yana? Uh, this is what happened. And I didn't ask questions. I said, yep. And I called and, and you, you guys, you guys, you and Nika and Nico and, uh, and shit happens. And, and, and he, he was alive and, and what I called Yana and I just stayed out of it and, and he's dead and he's never coming back. Um, but I just. I don't know. There's, there's, uh, there's some real good people. There's some fucking amazing people here. But, but he was one of the best. And I'm not just saying that because there's one of the Swedes I don't like. Uh, you know, we're friend. Like it's, it's, it's a war. You're not gonna get along with everyone. Uh, two of the guys who went home, we keep in close contact. Like when I was home, I seen them a few times, and we had our time. But he was about as good as they come. And because I was in one of my shitty little moods or whatever, I declined going to hang out with my friends and uh it don't make it better but uh i don't do that anymore do you know like i'll drive through nipro and tomorrow morning i will go see a mechanic i know like who's always helped me i know he 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 heard me speak in english once do you need help and now i know his mom i know his sister you know how it works mm -hmm. over here yep. but yep. It, it it's a half hour out of my day and I don't know when I'll see them again. I'm going to curse. I will not blow that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I, I I had to learn that through someone that died, uh, our friend. So I'm just uh, I take time now to like just send a message every now and then. Like I don't know, maybe you and I talk every couple of weeks, like just to text. So where are you now? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it's important. It is because we don't we it never is. we never we never know, and uh, I just uh, we never know, but. We know if something ever happened, I'm never ever going to question, you know, what what you're thinking about me or what you're, mm. you know, and uh, you know, and, and other people here too. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of funny when I was uh, a young lad and uh, and I was in the U.S. Armed Forces. You know, I realized that, like, when you get an overseas assignment and you're a young guy, like late teens, you know, turning 20 overseas, um, you make friendships like you've never had in your life, you know, because you're away from your family, the world, everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you live with these guys and you work with these guys and you, you know, party with these guys and and you make these like really, really super strong bonds that like never like any any of my brothers from my overseas rotation, if if. If any of them called me up and said, "Hey, I need you to fly over to here," and they, I'm, I'm gone. Tomorrow, Whatever, you know. Yep. And, and that same thing exists here. And I, like, I thought, me personally, I thought like, "Oh, that chapter in my life is over," you know. But you come here, and it's even more so because I mean, here we're like a smaller group, and uh, and we don't have like an American island that we're living on like you do in a in a, in a military installation overseas. And uh, so we're living with the people and we're working with the people and yet we're, you know, a couple of Westerners who are here. And uh, and I've made such fast friendships, I mean, and deep friendships with Westerners here and then also with so many Ukrainians. I yeah. mean, it's... Uh, How many people have you met here that you've met their families now? Oh, you know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. And or even the guys where you're serving on the rotation who you might never see again, they're talking to their family at night on like FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then and, you're, you're and they don't even them. speak a word of English with you, but they want their families in Kharkiv and they're, yeah. Eta Dan, Amerikanske. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And then someone will come up to you, I, you know, just uh, over near, um, between Zaporizhia, near Orekiv, mm -hmm. uh, where the, where all of the, um, 
advancement is being made now. Uh, we were working there for the last <laughs> month uh, until about a week ago. And uh, in the little town Tavariska, just north of there, um, we ran into a hospitaler group that no. we didn't know. They just We stopped at a little mahazin, a little uh, shop. They're there. And, and they stopped there too. And we said, hey. And, we, and then uh, one of them is like, oh, you know what? Uh, today's my daughter's birthday can you just make a quick video and say and i was like yeah i'm you know i'm an american hospitaler i work with your mom and you know with your mom she's really proud of you and uh uh, uh happy day and uh and she's like oh that's perfect and the guy's like oh it was my son's birthday yesterday can you make one fuck yeah so you know Godfather, you do this, Godfather. And not, yeah and so now like you've got a couple more friends you know and you've got this li little thing so it's yeah and and I told you that I was kind of taking on a new person to be drone's replacement. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and when we're heading out to uh, to the rotation, we, we're picking up drone, and he's like, "Oh, come on, you got to come and have dinner with my family." Yeah. Okay. So we walk in, and I know every generation of his family, all the you know, know them all by name, and they're oh, he's this. And we walk out, and the 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 newer guys like, "Holy crap! How do you know all these people? How do you know?" It's just because, yeah, you you work with someone, and pretty soon you know all their family, and you, yeah. Mate, you're going you're going to the baptisms, the weddings, the funerals, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh the... yeah, oh yeah. Yes, oh. indeed. And they're cooking for you. Oh man, do they make some really really good stuff? Jesus, for you. I've Ooh. I've learned to become rude. I, I offended uh, this woman the other day in a territorial unit. I ate. And then they wanted to feed me like these potatoes they made with uh, with salo in the middle, mm -hmm. which are delicious. Mm -hmm. But I said no, and she got really offended. What do you mean no? And and like you have to eat. And then I made a joke. I says the only women I have to listen to are my devushka, my mamushka, and babushka, you know. And and I says the rest I do the best I can. She was some upset, and I said to my friend afterwards, this country is like Christmas. Everywhere you go, like you, you know, when you go visit the in-laws and your family, you have to eat tactically throughout the day yeah that's what ukraine's like you, they don't you've got to eat tactically everywhere you go or you're going to be sick when we were down in zaporizhia uh when it was liberated uh we when we got down there we literally got pulled out of the car that we were driving in by the ukrainians who were you, like you couldn't drive down the road there was bands of ukrainians with waving ukrainian flags and they would walk out in the road and stop you and you'd have to stop the truck and they would come up and pull the door open and you know it was it was Thank the, you. Thank it was a little bit earlier doctor, than this doctor. time of year, but it was warm. Yes, and they just <clears throat> they would pull you out of the car and hug you and grown men, like like middle aged men, crying, just sobbing like babies, hugging you, saying thank you, thank you, daku, 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 or spasibo, spasibo. But uh, uh, they um, we ended up settling in a little village down there, and uh, and the locals were doing so much for us. And there was a babusia down the road. Sonia was her name. Yeah. And she lived alone. She had lost her, her husband years ago. And uh, so she would come down. It wasn't every day, but most days she would come down and knock on the door. And, oh, come on, come on, come on. It's time to go eat. And this was, I was with uh, <clears throat> Garda, Polina, yeah. and Nico. And uh, Nico and I would always, like, joke that we would have to, like, when we're in the in the in the morning we're going to make breakfast and listen we're like wait wait a minute is sonia coming is babusia sonia coming yeah. because if she is we can't eat a bite here because she would have none of it we would go over to her house and she made the best food you know you know how soup is huge here yeah, so every yeah, day it was yeah. like this big soup it's a different level soup and, here is like yeah. a and uh and she just made the most amazing like home cooked ukrainian foods and <clears throat> it was wonderful but she stuffed us to the gills oh yeah you had to like no fight her no like chance. no 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 stop just you know chit 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 and uh and then she would break out her somokon and uh ukrainian moonshine and she would uh she would put the glass out for me and for nico and then she would put one out for her and polina and she would and she would pour nico's so it was like crowned at the top and then she would and i'd go ch -ch 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 -ch, and she'd pour it like it was crowned at the top and then she would go over to paulina and just go boop, and her boop, and then okay so we would toast and, we'd, and she'd okay oh, and she would fill nico's up fill and then she would go over to paulina and boop, and her boop, 
And I was like, what the heck? But uh, yeah, she was uh, she was amazing. Just an incredible Sounds amazing. one. Yeah, it was great. So I took all of her address and everything. I don't know how I'm actually going to get something sent to her, but uh, she also like, I don't know, read the tea leaves or something. She was a prognosticator. And she, uh, she said that she had 11 years to live. And so I promised her that like, okay, in 10 years from today, so that was in 2022, I'm like in 2032, I'm going to send you something really nice. So uh, I have an address. Uh, I think it will probably just be like to the closest post office in her name. And then, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Babusia Sonia. There's so many of the good ones here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Bro, I gotta hit the road. Yes, you do, you got a little drive ahead of you. Uh, right? Well, and, uh, I've, gotta, I've gotta get to Tilda's and I've gotta go to Kostantinivka before I go. I might just leave in the morning. I'll get done what I, I'll get everything done and go right tomorrow. That, that's what I'd recommend you do. Get Tilda's, Tilda's got fast either. internet, I gotta offload the phone. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm like trying to record the memories not the memories like nothing's gonna happen but a few of my friends here I've, I've done these interviews with just friends what's their life like here because my whole theory is like uh people can't care about us if they don't know about us yeah do you know what i mean that's yeah. it that's it and yeah. what what god forbid something happens to me uh then there's other people like you've met harley like who uh, who work as volunteers and collect and bring shit over like god forbid anything ever happened they have somewhere else to go I'm, I, I but follow, I'm not going anywhere. I follow so. Harley, and I know Harley, and I know how like high energy Harley is, and how mm -hmm. like uh, restless Harley is. And I see now he's like fully, fully dedicated to this EOD thing. Mm -hmm. And Godspeed, man, great. What it's a... it's amazing. But it was it was uh, it was people from my YouTube that backed him because okay. someone found my theory was if you're German, you should go talk in German to Enrico, who brings the stuff over, or, or England. Maybe you'll back an English lad. That's how he got his truck. Someone, someone bought his truck with someone else here, Harley, and you know, met him and yeah, and uh, th like that paid for his EOD course, that's, and that's and awesome. now now he's with Uda. Yeah. You know what I mean? With yeah. Uh, yeah, like this is Hospitallers, this one and the other one, Ukrainian Volunteer Army. Now now yeah. Harley it's is not right sector. Uh, a lot of these trolls like no, but, to identify it as right sector. It's yeah. not right sector at all. They're just uh, Har Harley's not a member of UDA, but he's just helping out the UDA um, the UDA unit there that's doing the EOD. And uh, you know Harley can go as far as he wants to go. You know, like he yeah. can do whatever. He's he <laughs> like certainly say, he's, he's certainly he, capable. He has got dedication and energy like few people I've met. Well, and you've got it too. You've got it too. You guys probably have competitions with each other. No, I didn't like but, that. Uh, it's just, you, you do what you can, and then if you can't do anything, you get the hell out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, uh, at least at least it should be that way. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I think all of the, hopefully all of the Western superheroes have already kind of shot their load here and left. You know the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We Americans, we were big on it. You know, you had Superman would come walking in and... Uh, I'm an American. I'm I'm here to save you. I'm going to show you how to fight this war and do this. You just follow me and no They're problem. We'll, we'll, yeah. They're Shut gone. up. You don't know how to fight the Russians. These guys have been fighting it for years and years and years. And they've lived with them their whole lives. Uh, maybe you want to walk in. Shut up. Follow their lead. Do what they're doing. Learn from them. And then if you have some tips or little information you want to share they'll accept it a lot better. Uh, because when you walk in and tear your shirt open and tell them that you're Superman and you're gonna save it don't the day, go. they, no, they just, they, they tune you out immediately and say, get, move on. Move That's on. all dead. The but, only thing that persists here from what I see and it is dying is the ones who go with the narrative, I'm the only one helping, mm. or when they uh, sabotage other foreigners who are helping. And, and that, yeah. that persisted for a while, but it's dying out. If we don't, if we don't help each other, when and where we can, is it? I mean, I'm sorry. These the cream. Words, we're at the time the, the, the cream. The cream has risen to the top. Yeah, I think so. I, really, I, mean? I really think so. But I mean, there it's a it's a it's a cliche. It's two words, but same team. Same you know, team. Same team. We're we're all over here doing the same thing, 
And uh, so why can't we support each other and help each other? And yeah, like you say, it's only the, mostly it's the cream that's left. So uh, we should all get along swimmingly now. Um, the, the, the I'm gonna save you heroes, they're, they've already flown the coop. Pretty much, pretty uh, much. Yeah, and, so. And long may it continue, as long as it has to continue. As long as we have to be here. As long as, yeah. and Ho hopefully not long. Hopefully not long. I, uh, I'm the eternal optimist. I, I, I feel like things are going our way again. Uh, they've slowed a little bit, um, necessarily. Uh, people might be a little disappointed or impatient, but uh, from, from our viewpoint, I can see that it was definitely calculated and it was definitely uh, necessary. It served a couple of pur pur purposes. I mean, it didn't needlessly spend lives and uh, uh, and it kind of held serve uh, until uh, we could be better prepared and have a better... First, we had to find out what we needed. And then we had to get it. And then we had to learn how to use it. How to use it. And then we had to implement it, right? So now we're at that phase where it's being implemented and we're seeing the results of it. And uh, I see only good things uh, going forward from here, so... I think so. Yeah. I, I'm I'm optimistic, but yeah. at, at the same time, I plan pessimistically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hope for the best, plan for the worst. Right? Plan for the worst. Yeah. yeah. And now, yeah. now I gotta go to Tilda's. Hopefully, she don't yell at me. Well, that's gonna. I mean, with Tilda, you can expect the worst, but you know that when you get with Tilda, it's always gonna be the best. Of course, she, she's a she, Swedish fairy godmother, by the way. She is the best. We have a chat group i don't know if i ever told you my chat group with her and uh throne and a couple people uh is the swedish angel club and uh yeah blessed by tilda it's oh uh, she's she's all that in a bag of chips <laughs> so you got you got a few more days on this rotation maybe and then off to the next one yeah i think it's six more days on this one and then we're almost staying in place our 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 area of operation is going mm. to be the same, but where we're going to house is going to be kind of on the other side. But, uh, yeah. I got you a beautiful truck from Sweden, an L200, that uh, caused me nothing but problems on the way here. And it's in Lviv, waiting for one fucking microchip. And then, after that, you've got a beautiful truck. You've, yes. got, an, you've got an L200 with 180 horsepower that drives like fuck. Uh, it's got a diff rear differential lock. Um, it's, got, it's got everything you want. Uh, people, a lot of people listening won't understand exactly how big that is, the rear differential lock. Uh, right now, it's cool. Um, in about two months, it's going to be absolutely necessary, no doubt, like the American Express card, do not leave home without, without it. Without it. Once the mud starts yeah. here, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I better get hit in the road, brother. Yes, sir. Always good to see you. It's good to see always you, good to see you, man. And of course, like we always promise, not so long till the next one. Not so long. Not so long. Hopefully, we get your truck within the next week or so. Yeah, and hopefully, see you down south there too. All right, bro.